Well, here we are at the, the pumpkin patch. And so far it's uh, doing okay, I would say. So the, the state of the pumpkin patch is moderate uh, to good. Um, per, uh, the pumpkins are starting to produce pretty well. The plants are looking okay. There's definitely some yellowing and some burnt leaves and other things. Um, this year has been extremely difficult as far as it's been a drought summer. Uh, we went, uh, gosh, almost three or four weeks without much to any rain at all uh, this year. Hauling water out here has been a challenge. And you can tell just by the size of the sunflowers, the corn in here didn't grow very well. Um, the weeds, of course, grew pretty good, but uh, we're doing okay, though. So let's go check out what has been going on out here and how things are doing. Let's see if we got some pumpkins, some uh, pretty healthy plants. This one doesn't seem to have any pumpkins on it. And this row here was the mystery row, remember? Remember planting. This has uh, who knows what in it. Uh, all various kinds of pumpkins of some sort, but um, small ones, big ones, different kinds, some giant pumpkins, some regular size. A lot of flowers and stuff in here. These plants look pretty healthy. Got some, some nice little pumpkins for them in here. So these, these are probably anything that's probably starting after I would say today or this week is probably not going to make it for our October harvest. Um, we've got quite a few here. A lot of them starting. So these plants are looking really good. Vines are looking good. Leaves are looking good. Some bigger ones here. Yeah, there's quite a few in here. And then some of them, I've seen a few that were this size. So that's a pretty good size. That, that's going to end up being a pretty good size pumpkin, I would think, by... We have still two full months of growing here. And quite a few here, here. So we've got quite a few in here. So this is doing pretty good. Oh, there's one down there that's orange. For those of you guys who are new to the patch, um, we're gonna be dealing with some deer management here. I uh, wanna make sure that deer stay out of this. We planted about a thousand plants out here. Uh, I don't know if I have a thousand plants anymore. I mean, some died, some didn't make it, some are gonna be too small to produce pumpkins. So probably we could say 900 healthy plants growing in here. Uh, my goal is to get a thousand pumpkins out of this patch, but it's been a rough year. So I don't know if it's gonna happen. Well, we're still hoping. Uh, there's, there might be a thousand in here right now, I don't know. But uh, we have uh, planted all of this. I put uh, hay down the middle to help keep weeds down, which it's done a fair job. I uh, wish I would have had more to put down a little thicker, maybe wood chips or something next year. Bumblebees seem to be doing okay. A lot of people asked about this cardboard box. Are they, you should make a lid for it or something, and probably should. I have that little tote uh, lid that I put over it. Um, but they seem to be doing fine, and they just have to make it through another few months, and then the queen will take off out of there and find a burrow somewhere anyway. Uh, so I think we'll be all right. There's a plastic box inside the cardboard box that could protects them from water, so. I see them all throughout the patch pollinating flowers, and I think this has been, they've been the reason for um, a lot of those new pumpkins that we see out there. It's already hot out here. Uh, try to get out here early, but uh, it, sometimes it just, it just doesn't work. So what I want to do today is put up a deer deterrent fencing, okay? This is not a 100% uh, keeping a deer out, and it's not going to keep rabbits or groundhogs or other uh, low crawling animals out, but this will help prevent deer from getting in here. Now I haven't seen any signs of deer getting into the pumpkins. I do, it does look like something's been, you know, chomping away at some tomato leaves. Um, but uh, I don't know, as the pumpkins get bigger, as the hay fields are cut and the deer are running lower on food coming towards the fall, they're gonna be harvesting the soybeans around here and other things, will they get desperate? Will they start eating the pumpkin leaves? Will they start eating the pumpkins? I don't know, but I don't wanna find out. So I'd like to start putting up some fencing. So the plan is, one of my favorite uh, fencing and trellis materials f uh, fishing line is what we're going to try out today. I have various sizes of fishing line here. We just went to the store and got what they had. They didn't have what we wanted. But the plan is to use some of these um, metal T-posts. 
Uh, I've got a T-Post pounder. I'd like to say thank you to Danny and Sharon uh, out there, friends of ours who, um, man, blessed us with uh, letting us borrow this, pound, this uh, fence post pounder and gave us these fence posts. So it makes this project uh, pretty much free for us. Um, the fishing line is super cheap. Uh, you know, these are only a couple bucks for a roll of them. Plan is to use those T-Posts pound those in uh, real wide spacing. I only have 12 posts out here we're gonna go around the whole thing with. I'm gonna put four in the corners, couple in the middle, you know, in between, and what I wanna do is run the fishing line uh, in between them. So from what I have heard, YouTube videos as well as other blogs and website articles and things, is that the 30 pound test fishing line is supposed to be the, the best way to go. And the idea is, is that the deer will walk up to the patch and they will feel it on their nose or their body and they will step back and they can't really see it very well, especially in the evening and morning, and they will kind of stay out of there. They just don't, they can't really see how high it is, so they can't tell how high to jump over it. You know, their faces get tangled in it and things like that. And so they just kind of stay away. They don't understand it and they, they kind of stay away. So it's a deterrent. Could they walk right through it? Could they run right through it? Of course they could. They could break right through it, I'm sure, if they, if they wanted to and run it and run through it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have 30 pound test. I, I think I have some 30, I have some 50, I have some 20. <laughs> That's just all they had. Hey, stores are far away, all right? So it takes a lot to take a half an hour trip to the store and, and then it turns into, you know, lunch and all kinds of other things. So we're gonna use what we have here today. I'm gonna alternate the heavier and thinner uh, weight fishing lines so that still the deer will be able to hopefully not see all of it and feel it and, and you know, they won't break it and, and we'll see what happens. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna pound the posts in first and then we'll start running some line. Guess I need gloves. Got, uh, I don't know, I guess I got about a foot gap here on top. Um, it's a little different on each pole because they went in the ground a little further and some were shorter than others. But And then as I get down lower to the ground here, the gap gets a little bit closer. And then I ran a bunch of extras um, at the bottom. And the grass and weeds and stuff are definitely tying up the bottom ones, but I'm not as worried about that as the middle. And so um, they're pretty tight. The middle ones are pretty tight. I shouldn't have ran the top one first. Uh, that was a mistake because as I pulled the uh, the line, you know, all these lines around here, I think it pulled the posts in just a little bit. And so, I mean, they're, they're still pretty tight, but they're not as tight as the lower ones are. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with this. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a, a crazy little, uh, little fence idea, but, uh, you know, for practically 10 bucks, you know, some rusty old posts, and I only used 11 of them. I didn't even put all 12 in. Actually, I only used 10. 
Um, I didn't put a gate or anything in. I can walk right through this, obviously. I can just bend through and, and walk right through the, um, the fishing line. I don't need to get into this patch with any type of vehicle or carts or anything like that until the end of the season. Um, when I do come out here to water, I back my truck up right here and I just drag a hose down the aisles. And so that, uh, that, won't, that won't bother me with the fence here. Wow, it's, uh, it's hot out here in the field. I'll tell you what, it's about 10 degrees hotter than it is in my backyard. Just out here in the middle of the sun. It's just blazing hot today. So about 91 degrees, I think. So let me know, what do you guys think? You think the deer fencing is going to work? You think this will actually deter deer from stepping into this patch? I know it's not going to stop them, but do you think it will deter them? Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully I can catch them on camera um, snooping around here. Sometimes in the evening I can see them out here and uh, maybe I'll try to sneak a camera out here, a trail cam or uh, something and I'll see if I can catch some video and I'll, I'll have that uh, towards the end of the season if I can catch it. So as always guys, thumbs up on the video means a lot to me. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Think I'm going to get a thousand pumpkins out of here. Some of you expert pumpkin growers can chime in and let me know what you think. But uh, I think we're getting pretty close. I think we, we probably have over five, six hundred in there right now. That's just my guess, um, but we'll see. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. <music>